are uh, really excited for this one. Spencer Lenu, first ever podcast, cars. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Honored to be here. True or false? Are you a bit of a road rager? Oh, no. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> who, who told you this story. Who told me? Who told me? Nah. Freddie wants you on an extended bench, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, nah. probably just like, get the fuck out of here and just hung up. You get back in the country from Vegas. Mm. <laughs> you go straight into an army camp. Tell me what was that like? You ended up in hospital. <laughs> so you signed with the Roosters. Was there anyone you you think you'll take a liking to? Probably heaps of people were like, disagree with me saying this, but yeah, Jared. <laughs> 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 what is a secret talent you have that no one knows about? I don't know if it's a talent, but I came first in English. <laughs> Did you? Hey, proper came first like that. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Let's Try episode 12. I'm really excited for this one. Spencer Lenu, first ever podcast, Cars. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Honored to be here. Good to have a chat. You're a bit nervous, Thanks. I can tell. Huh? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> How you been, man? It's been a busy couple of weeks for you. Just got back from Vegas. What was that like? Yeah, um, it was obviously a mad experience, but um, yeah, the lifestyle there is a little bit too much for me. Bit of a, more like an introvert and all that kind of stuff. So jumping out of the plane and seeing all the casinos and all that kind of stuff was, yeah, something else. I don't think you're an introvert at all. No, Not on the footy field anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a proper introvert, I reckon. And uh, how was that? How long were you there for? So I was there for three days, three nights, and it was just proper just hammered with like promotional stuff for the NRO and that. And then went to Utah. Utah for one day and mm. then pretty much flew back home. What was the stadium like? Allegiant Stadium. Yeah, home literally. of the what, Las Vegas Raiders, right? Yeah, a Raiders. Yeah, like the stadium is just unreal. Eh? It's just everything there is just like next level, bro. Like it's over the top, huh? Just bro, too much money. Yeah, way too much money. I think that, I think it was like eight hundred million dollars they put into that stadium. Oh, that is disgusting. Oh, yeah, just hearing those numbers just like trip me out, bro. Like, What's it feel like for you to play one of the most modern stadiums in the world? Like it must be pretty special. Yeah. It was obviously like, yeah, like was you said. surreal, like pretty yeah, surreal? Yeah, proper surreal. Like, this is going to be my debut game for the Roosters too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, like to have my first game at such a, you know, unique stadium. It's obviously in uh, first game in Las Vegas as well. Um, yeah, have you been to be Vegas before? Okay. No, nah, that was my first time in America, bro. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, heard all these stories about it. So I've got, I've got plenty for you, man. I went there for my bucks and yeah, I, I left my soul there for <laughs> so I need to go collect it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh did you do you know where you guys gotta stay in Vegas roughly? Are you gonna be staying like in the main part or kind of on the outskirts? Yeah honestly I I'm pretty sure we don't even go there till like the last three days of our oh, of right. our camp. I think we're staying staying somewhere in LA. I think UCLA we train at UCLA and then fly over like the last two, three days. That is so cool, bro. Yeah, bro. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I think some of the boys have been in too much trouble if we stayed in Vegas the whole oh, time. So you know what? I can I can, can possibly <laughs> imagine. Um <laughs> I got a mutual friend of ours that uh told me a bit of a story about you. True or false? Are you a bit of a road rager? Oh my god. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> who who told you this story. Who told me? Who told me? Nah. Nah? No, nah, I wasn't critter. Close? I wasn't close either. True. We're not gonna do you probably Bizzo or something. One it of was Bizza. It was, it was Bizza. Bizza. Sorry, Bizza. <laughs> 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 Tell me about this. You're a bit of a road rager. I can see it happening for some reason. Nah, I'm not a road rager at all. Honestly, I think it was just you know first first time getting your piece. It was just this one story <laughs> with Critter, bro. Because I used to drive Critter to to um, training from school. Yeah. Anyways, there was just one time it was just like proper preseason. I was just like, you know, what? I had like I can't deal with anyone's like crap and that. <laughs> and I was literally at the the lights. This one time, and then Crit was in the car with me, and then someone beeped me like, bro, the lights have been green for like 0 0.2 seconds, and I got a beep, and I was like, bro, we just got thrashed at training. I was like, nah, fuck, stuff this. <laughs> Guy pulled up with his girlfriend in the car, and I just went off, and bro, that, that story just, yeah, it's just gone through the whole printer system, bro. Everyone just knows me as a road rager. But and everyone just adds GST to the story. Bro, proper <laughs> GST, bro. That's Crit and Bizzer, like, you guys are stuff. Bro. You're not a bit of a clicker, eh? Clicker? You reckon you're a bit of a clicker? What do you mean clicker? You know, you snap it a bit, you got a bit of a short fuse sometimes. Nah, I could probably, I probably do, but like. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a trait of an introvert. Nah, <laughs> nah, I am a proper introvert, but like that one time, yeah, the Critter and, you know, Critter and Bizzard, they just blow up oh, stories. Oh, 100%, 100%. Yeah, now you know, so. No one's, no one's <laughs> safe for those guys around. Bro, proper. Well, brother, our great friends from Shoe Grab want to gift you a pair of sneakers. Are you a bit of a sneakerhead? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. What, what do you wear normally? 
bit of everything, bro. I'm a bit of a diverse sneakerhead. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, open it up, brother. Open it up. Let's see what you got. Let's have a quick sneak peek. Oh, yeah. oh, Easy oh, 350s. <laughs> you got looked after. Papa. What did you get? A hey, big shout out to Sugar. Best no. in the business. Best in the business for sure. Oh, hey. oh they're sick. They're mad. Yeah, I actually don't own a pair of those. No, nah, I don't know what these are called, like belugas or something. I don't know what they are yeah, either. No but uh, they look mad. Bro, they look proper. mad. I might yeah. have to hit up Jay after this show's finished. Big love to Shoe Grab, bro. <laughs> That's mad. Thanks, Shoe Grab. Thanks, Jay. So it's been, a, it's been a bit of a whirlwind for you. Obviously, debuting at such a young age and you've accomplished so much already. Um, how do you stay motivated? Yeah, that's a good question, honestly. I honestly don't even think I've really done too much in the NRL. Obviously, like you said, won premierships and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And yeah, I think it's just time sort of like a personal growth sort of thing. Um, you know, my parents and that sacrificed so much for me um, to be where I am so far. So obviously their sacrifice doesn't go like, you know, unnoticed and all that kind of stuff. And that keeps me motivated. And, um, you know, just my little cousins and all that kind of stuff, um, just having that, being that role model for them know um sort of like hard work can get you anywhere so for sure yeah i think that just keeps me motivated early in the year you got picked to um be 90th man for new south wales what was that moment for you yeah that was crazy um i still remember like i think we had we played a game i forget who we played against but um we had three days off so i had to like charge the night before and then um yeah i was just proper sick in bed like my missus was, like trying to get me out of bed like ah, leave me alone blah 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 anyways this random I, I never like pick up random numbers. Thank God you answered my call. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like literally, like I was just like, nah, I'm not not answering it. She, uh, called again. I was like, nah, didn't answer. I was like, proper sick. I was like, you know what? She called again. The person called again. I'm like, I picked it up. I was like, oh yeah, whatever. She's like, oh yeah, Freddie wants you on an extended bench, blah blah blah. And I was just like, nah. But I was proper like, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, of course. I was probably just like, get the fuck out of here and just hung up. Bro, I was just like, I was just thought. She like, thought it was a prank? I thought it was a prank, bro. <laughs> and then she called again, and I'm like, is Biza with you? I was literally just told her, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, is Biza with you? And like, bro, like, my sickness just went away. She's like, nah, like, I need you, like, at this, like, in Kuji tomorrow morning. Like, you're proper in the squad. And, and yeah, bro, like, my, my sickness went away. I was like, felt healthy and all that kind of stuff. Ran downstairs, and like, oh, I put on speaker. I'm like, oh, can you repeat that again? And then she, she, to say in front of my missus, she said it. I was just like, there's no fucking way, bro. I was like that thrilled, called my parents and I had a little cry to them. It's mad. And yeah, bro, like I still can't really believe that I was in that system, bro, honestly. like, But yeah, it was just sort of all that hard work and all that kind of stuff sort of paying off. And and yeah, it was just, I was just really grateful for the opportunity to be around, you know, all those players and, you know, just around, you know, the the chats of origin mm. and um you know you've been there so well i was gonna say like you should believe that you deserve to be there because i i remember how hard you worked as a 19 year old coming through and you know you definitely i definitely looked up to you especially whenever you came on to the, onto the field and that's yeah. what you brought you brought that energy aggression you always wanted to be a game changer and uh for me personally man like it's no surprise that you're in that team you definitely fit that fit that mold and now that you've got a little taste of new south wales how much more do you want to actually get a starting spot in the, in the 17. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, lit up a little bit of a fire. Um, had a little bit of a taste there, like being in amongst it, you know, training with the boys, getting mm -hmm. to put the training jerseys and all, all that kind of stuff on. And um, yeah, obviously, we just want to go into this year, just put my best foot forward for for the Roosters. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big believer in if you're if you're a team player, all the personal accolades and all that will come um, come off the back of how how well you play for the team and um, and yeah, I think I, if I have that as the forefront of my mind, just you know, playing well for the, for the boys at, at Roosters and for sure. you know, all that stuff will come. So hopefully, hopefully have a good year and yeah, make the team. Well, you've accomplished so much already at 23. It's crazy to say. And I want to know, especially being so young, what keeps you grounded? Yeah, like I touched on before, you know, um, uh, not to go too much into it, but you know, my, my parents, you know, sacrificed so much for me and my brothers. Um, yeah, I'll just say my parents, honestly, like mm. just, just to see how much it's pretty cliche, but, um, just to see how much they sacrifice for me, you know, doing all the drives, they still sort of do my washing and all that kind of stuff now. And, um, yeah, I'd say my, my parents, um, yeah. I like that. Parents, yeah. 
I like that. Would you say you're still hungrier than ever to kind of achieve more success in your career? Or do you feel like you get a bit comfortable with all the stuff you've already accomplished? No, 100%. I, th- I, think, I, don't, um, I don't feel that. I definitely don't feel that. No, nah, yeah. I think once you sort of like, um, I sort of went through the hardship of, you know, in 2019, mm. we sort of had that like little slope of loss and, you know, hardship in that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a big difference between losing and winning. And I've, I've had a had a bit of both and yeah. you know for everyone everyone loves winning and i love um like i said winning and all that kind of stuff and i definitely believe that after all the years that i've played that discipline takes a lot of sacrifice and you've got to sacrifice what you want now for what you want most um that's definitely something that i learned and i'm sure that you've learned the same along the way especially with the upbringing that you had you know it's, it wasn't easy to growing up in the mount Druid. you know you pay if you, you see it yourself firsthand that your family works so hard for you and you can i can already see the admiration that you have for a man so Kudos to you. So you jump off a plane and you get back in the country from Vegas. Mm. <laughs> you go straight into an army camp. <laughs> Tell me what was that like? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it was it was pretty hard, eh? Um, so my flight, I was supposed to get in here on Friday morning. Yeah. So I flew over from Utah to San Fran and I was supposed to get in on the connecting flight from San Fran to Australia. Oh. And then that got cancelled, so I had to stay the night in San Fran, so I got here Saturday morning and then that's when we started. I think we got here Saturday at 6 a.m. and then we started at one one o'clock in the afternoon. But that was just all charity work. And I just remember that night, like we had this um, these army people come in and just oh. speak about what it's like to, you know, sacrifice and all this. And I'm just sitting at the back, like, like just nodding off, like I was trying my best to stay awake. And, and um, I just got up, I had to go into the toilet and just wash my face, like try to wake up. Anyways. And then we stayed. We stayed the night. Um, we slept down the on Allianz Stadium. Yeah. And then pretty much our day started at five a.m. And then we finished at ten thirty that night. So it was it was just a massive day, bro. And yeah, like I told you, you ended up in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to ask you, but since you brought it up, yeah, what probably, happened? No, nah, at least I think it was just just from the jet lag. Yeah. You know, I was pro- probably hadn't like drank water like since you know what I don't know what it was, but um. Probably just proper dehydration and just, yeah, just the work, bro. Like started at 5 a.m., did like a wrestle and then 9, we did like a boxing session and then had a little bit of lunch and then we straight, went straight into army camp. I remember Robbo was telling me like, oh, no, sh- it's not too bad. Like it would just be like keeps the teamwork <laughs> and then fucking just got ripped like a whole new, yeah, you know what. But um, yeah, and then ended up in hospital. So Far out. But you're all good now? Nah, yeah, all sweet, yeah. Who was best on ground? Best on the ground. Bro, honestly, I was just in my own head, bro. <laughs> I was just like... I would have been too. Yeah, bro, I was just like carrying all this stuff, jumping in water, jumping out, like just running and everything. Honestly, just was in my own head. Couldn't like... Wasn't worried about anyone else, bro. I was just like, just get through it, bro. Don't die. And that, That's a shame. Bro, I, I literally ask... almost died, so... Oh, yeah, you literally did. <laughs> right? And you just say it so blase, which is crazy. <laughs> nah, I didn't die, I wanted bro. to know uh, if you paid attention to um, Jenko, Michael Jennings. Yeah, <laughs> How did he go? Being one of the old guys in the team. No, nah, I honestly didn't really like see Jenko, eh? <laughs> honestly, yeah. And that was like my first time with all the boys. So I didn't really know what to expect, who's the fittest and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I think all the boys just had a proper dig. And I remember I had a similar thing where you saying about the flight back from Vegas, but similar but different. I was coming back from my box, so I was in a far worse state <laughs> than you were. Um, and I actually, I actually cut my sh- uh, trip short because um, we had our Prezzo, season, uh, season ending Prezzo. True, yeah. So Gus told me, goes, you have to be back for this. Like, you, you, there's no ifs or buts. I'm like, all right, no worries. So all my mates stayed back and I come back with one of my teammates, Jeremy Lattimore. Yeah. So went from Vegas to LA and then straight to Sydney. And I dozed off. I ended up falling asleep for like seven hours, mad. And when I woke up and I looked at the flight map, it said the, the plane was going to Melbourne, not Sydney. Oh. And I was freaking, <laughs> I broke out in a sweat. I was running around up and up and down the plane trying to figure out what was going on. And apparently someone had a medical episode, so the plane got diverted. And when we get True. to Melbourne, I'm like, rough, roughly around 3.30, got another connecting flight back to Sydney. I got back at like 4.30, 5 o'clock, something like that. And I was in Penrith at 6.30. I was like, I was, like, <laughs> I put a, I was on the red carpet and like I took it a photo. I was like, I might put that up to show everyone. That was pretty, it was pretty hilarious. <laughs> How would you say the, that army camp compared to the Penrith Army camp that we did in 2020. Yeah. What was that like? What, what, what was the comparisons? Yeah, honestly, like, the one that we did at Penrith was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Everyone says that. And that, we was... only just had, like, it was only, like, five hours that we did at that Army camp too. So, yeah, we had three days there. 
And yeah, like honestly, one of the hardest things that I've done in my life. And I was in rehab. I was with yeah, rehab. With, Were you um, rehabbing that? Yeah, you? bro. I was there. Like I did my hamstring. Oh. I did my hammy. I was there with Sean, Brady McGrady, and I think Ty I, I don't know if Timo was Mitch there Kenny. at the time. Yeah, anyways. And like I just remember, like the furthest we'd run in our rehab sessions was like 3Ks. And I remember as soon as we got off the bus, we did like a 20K run. I'm just like, what the f is going on, bro? And we were just going, I remember this hill was just literally, I just looked up there like this. I was like, how the, how the heck am I going to get up here, bro? I remember, and you know what, running up that hill, like there was no grip. Like we were just sliding down was the just hill. Like, what it was the heck's 35 going on? plus degrees. It was a nightmare. My, and we're carrying the backpacks, the oh, jerry cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a nightmare. Do you remember the first day? I remember like, like the first moment of the army camp. What? So, so I remember we're in the cafeteria. Oh, no, yeah, no. You're talking <laughs> we're having breakfast, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. 6.30, the sun's out, the birds are singing. <laughs> and I walk up to James Tunnel and I'm like, man, like these army dudes, like they, they, they're nice guys, yeah. eh? <laughs> and he's done that army camp before with the Cowboys in 2015, oh, I think it was. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's not giving much away. I'm like, no, they're not good. I'm like, okay, fair enough. 15 minutes later. Right, get the fuck out, yeah. Simon. Oh, shit. I'm running into people. Yeah, yeah, and Berto yeah. grabs us. Yeah, and yeah. he was quiet as when he first came into yeah, the, yeah. the seat, the, when he first hit the scene. And he's like, all right, boys, you know, we've got to get in uh, numerical order, one to 30. Let's go. And we were just like, the fuck. <laughs> we're just running into each other. Yeah. Oh, man. Now, I remember running out the door. <laughs> And like everyone's just like, yeah, get the fuck, get the fuck, whatever, whatever. And all I hear is like all these chips just pop, bro. And I'm just like, fuck, surely this is not like something's gonna happen. And all he sees is like small white guy, who the fuck pop my chips? Get down, give me fucking push ups. I was just like, oh my. I reckon we did like a thousand push ups just to start the day. That bro. was a nightmare. My, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a long three days. This is bro. how ridiculous it was. But I had obviously a purpose behind it. Remember when they made us tip out our backpacks and then I sort all the chips, the yeah. cookies and all that, the tiny teddies and all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, Fish put the tiny teddies with the chips and yeah. then the army officer comes in. He's like, a oh, tiny teddy's fucking chips, Fish. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. Nah. He's like, get the fuck to the front. <laughs> he gets to the front. We're all in the plank position. Yeah. And he's like, do you know how to do your ABCs? Right. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I remember. He's, like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, right, do sing your it, ABCs. Sing it, sing it. A, B, C. <laughs> louder, louder. <laughs> I was losing it. I was nah, in that but much not. fucking pain, but I was one of the funniest moments of that whole camp. No, nah, yeah, actually. Man, I had some fucking serious chafe after that camp, honestly. It was, yeah, a, nah, it, it was pretty bad. Something else, yeah. So you signed with the Roosters. Um, you've obviously got your first taste with your new teammates. Um, was there anyone you kind of gravitated towards in that army camp? I know you were in your own head, but was there anyone you, you think you'll take a liking to? Probably heaps of people were like, Disagree with me saying this, but yeah, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, everyone's questions to me is like, oh yeah, what's gonna happen when you and Jared like see each other, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. He's a completely different right, person. Yeah, literally, sure. bro. Like everyone, like speaking to some people, like um, going into there, everyone just says like, he's just a completely different per yeah. um, person off the field. And you know, I sort of clicked with him already. Like he's a pretty genuine person. Um, he's really softly spoken. He is, eh? it sort of tripped me out when when I first um, met him. Um, but yeah, just see like just see all his leader qualities like during that camp and um, yeah, obviously we're both front rowers. So he's been in the game for so long now and mm. been like a well like renowned front rower too. So um, I'm just gonna be a sponge and try to learn as much as I can off him and you know try to be somewhat what he was in the NRL. So try to, like be in the NRL for as long as he can. So. So the hatchet's buried? Oh, yeah, it's buried. It's buried after that game. What bro. ended up happening? Uh, did it, it was, was it from um, when he sprayed you with water or something? No, nah, I didn't even, honestly didn't even know he sprayed me with the water, but that just like, everyone just seen that on the video and then that just blew up. Oh, he sprayed him with water. He's he's a little silk or whatnot. I was like, nah, I, I honestly didn't know. All I remember was just, Romeo was just like spraying um, the Roosters boys. And of obviously, you know, <laughs> Like Jared just trying to stick up for his boys, went to go after Romy. I was like, oh, this is not a fair fight. So I was just like, you know what, try to try to help help Romy and and yeah, got a six thousand dollar fine. Was that was that what you got for that <laughs> for the little grab? Yeah, I think and then yeah, and I was just told after the after the, after the game, I'm like bro, you're you're paying for my fine, so I helped you out there. You got to help me now. <laughs>
<laughs> so no, yeah, he paid off the fine. So raw sweet. Well, you've um you've been lucky enough to play with two of the best forwards in the game, Moses, Fish, Yowie. Uh, and now you're stepping into the Roosters scene with Victor Radley, Lindsay Collins, Jared. Um, how excited are you to kind of really make your mark amongst those kind of guys? Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, like, really excited. Um, you know, um, Fish and, and Moses are massive, you know, um, mentors for me. And like you said, Yoey as well. And, um, you know, like, just competing against them at training every single day gave me so much confidence to, you know, go, in, go into the games and, you know, try to compete against other front rowers. And um, like you said, I'm at the Roosters now and that's what, you know, drew me towards the Roosters was obviously their pack and, mm. you know, Victor, um, you know, Jared and... And um, Lindsay, and, and Lindsay, um, you know they're really, really big pack, and you know really aggressive pack, and you know that's sort of like my game. I molded like an aggressive sort of, sort of person, so I, I felt like I'd fit in pretty, pretty good, and and yeah, I'm just looking forward to see um to see how how we're gonna go this year, and um yeah, I'm just keen to rip in with those boys. So one of the biggest strengths you bring to a team is your obviously your impact off the bench. You've played most of your career off the bench. Is that a role you're still seeking, or are you seeking? A starting role this time around. Yeah, honestly, like wherever Robbo wants me, wherever the Roosters want me, uh, I'll, don't I'll, play humble. No, nah, proper, play. proper. Like, um, obviously, the aspirations to to start in the team is is always going to be there. Like, mm. I guess if you don't dream big, like, what what are you doing? So, um, yeah, obviously, the the dream to to start is always going to be there. But for now, like, um, wherever Robbo wants me, wherever I'm going to be, um, you know, best fit the team, that's where I'm going to be. And yeah, whether it's starting or coming off the bench, I'll be happy. So, were you um close to some of the Bulldogs at one point as well? Yeah, so I was pretty close. Yeah, how did that how did that come about? Because I I remember reading the articles in the papers, and you know, obviously the rumor mill was going wild at the time. Uh, you're pretty close, is that right? Yeah, I, I was. Um, obviously had the connection there with um Ciro and um obviously all the ex Penrith boys. Um, you know, Birdo kicks makes sense. And then hearing that Criddle was going to go, um, I was just like, you know. This is this has to be it, you know. Um, mm. Obviously, a Western Sydney team, not too far away from from where I stayed, like where my parents were staying, and I just felt like that would be the best, um, you know, fit for me. And you know, God told me otherwise, so you know, I signed with the Roosters, and and um, yeah, I'm a big believer in um, things happen for a reason. And, Likewise, and yeah, I'm here now, and, and I'm really happy f with my decision. So, how are you finding the latte sipping east compared to the west? <laughs> Yeah, everyone's everyone's um you know um giving me slack and all that kind of stuff. But, um, <laughs> of course, because I'm on the extra shot oat lattes and like, oh yeah, that's a proper eastern suburbs <laughs> coffee. I'm just like, honestly, like fish and moss put me on put me on the oat latte. So you know, I'm not no eastern suburbs coffee drinker. I was just Moses and that were drinking it. So I'm like, you know what? If they're drinking, it, I'm gonna drink it too. <laughs> <laughs> gonna give me their pals. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was gonna say as well when, when you had that altercation with Jared. When I saw those eyes, I'm like, I've seen those eyes before, but in a very different circumstance. And one memory sticks out from the rest is when we used to do shark bait in our wrestle <laughs> sessions. And if anyone doesn't know what shark bait is, it's pretty much you're in the middle and all your teammates are around in a circle. We do it right at the end of wrestle, so absolutely buggered. And I've wrestled a couple of blokes, and then at this point. I'm looking around to see who's going to come for me next. And Spencer, uh, with his crazy eyes, charging yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, those, that, those sessions were freaking hard, bro. Oh, fuck. Especially that shark bat at the end. Oh, what was that? Um, Luke, Luke Cortez. Yeah, that guy was Cortese, just proper Cortese. mental, bro. Just hated us. Just one of us. He was just like proper got a stiffy just watching us kill sure each other, was, bro. I'm pretty sure it was ex uh, SAS. Yeah, I think, he, or, oh, I think he was like something in the military. Mm. No, like, yeah. That was wild, those wrestle yeah, sessions. Those wrestle I'll, sessions I, I'll never hard, forget bro. like the feeling when I woke up knowing I had wrestled that day. Yeah. No water, straight hour, hour and a bit. Yeah, yeah. Bashing the shit out of each other. Mm. Yuck. Yeah. Having guys like you, Fish, James nah, Tarnell, Zane, Tenovato, yeah, Vili. Oh. Get lost. I'm a winger. I don't make these tackles, <laughs> man. Um, with uh, I want to kind of bring up this issue. And um, was, I think it was early in the year when you kind of experienced it properly around social media. Um, I think it was after the origin, especially when Bromi um, was copping with quite a lot of abuse um, for, his, I don't know, for his game. And um, I think most of it comes around from gambling, fantasy and I know Origin there's a lot of emotion that comes with it but have you experienced anything directly from social media? No nah, not really uh, I've been really lucky I've been you know um, in the team of of superstars so I get to fly under the radar a little bit and mm. um, 
yeah, I can't imagine what those boys are, you know, get to ex have to experience every single day. Like like you said, Romy cops a lot of abuse and, you know, that's like my older brother and I love that guy and, you know, I hate seeing all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you got to take the good of the bad with, mm. you know, this game. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of people invested in, in their gambling and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, when that stuff doesn't happen, um, you know, they take out their frustrations on, on some of the players and... Um, yeah, I've honestly been, you know, so fortunate that I haven't copped too much, too much, and a lot of my stuff's just come off, um, you know, the incident with Jared and and the incident with um Tane and Mills. So um, that's oh, probably like the most hate I've got. But honestly, in comparison to what those boys go through, mm -hmm. I can't even complain. Like, yeah. Well, you're pretty close with Romy. How does he cope with it? You, you just, uh, for me, you don't really notice it. Eh? It doesn't really affect him. But I think behind closed doors, maybe it does. Yeah, I think. I think when st people start mentioning his family, I think that's when, Good when it really, for sure, you know, when it really gets to him. Um, and I don't knock Romy for being the way he is because you know whether whether he does something good or or bad, he's everyone just hates him. So um, just as long as the people inside his circle know know his heart, and um, I think that that's what he believes in. Like if if people inside my circle know who I am, then it, everything else doesn't matter. So um, you know, obviously having those lessons, you know, seeing him go through that, like. I get to have those, you know, um, take those lessons up upon and, and, you know, just making sure to have a close circle is, you know, something I've, I've learned from him. So. Well, I agree, man. Have you um, spoken to Romy recently? Obviously, there's a lot of news circling around him at the moment. How's he doing? Have you spoken to him? Yeah, well, we had a little Christmas dinner together, all of us boys, oh. and, um, you know, he's there's a few, few teams there and um, I'm sure whatever decision he makes is – he'll make the right one and you know he's got a lot of family now and he's got three beautiful kids and um i love them to to death those kids and yeah i think all, whatever decision he makes he's going to make it to benefit his family and you know wh whether he stays at penrith or goes um you know i'll be right there with him so um, yeah i'm looking forward to see to see where he, where he goes and, and yeah so you speaking of Romy, uh you played with him in three grand final four grand finals three 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 grand finals uh, you also played with Critter, you know, your best mates. Um, out of those three grand finals, uh, what was your favourite moment? In each of them? Mm. If one stands out amongst the rest. Yeah, I think um, the 2021 grand final was, like, my, my favourite. Um, Critter said the same thing. Yeah, I think just, just it being, like, our first our first ever grand final and, um, you know, we moved our whole families to Sunny Coast mm. and, you know, COVID and all that kind of stuff and... You know, just the way we did it, like, all the boys were just proper depleted, bro. Like, um, we were playing, like, touch for, for like, our G2 sh sessions. Like, that's, like, usually our main session. We would get all our contact done, do all our strategies and all that kind of stuff. But, like, literally, like, we couldn't even field, like, field a team. Literally, all the boys, like, Ivan would just put all the boys on ice and just rock up to the games and just play, bro. And, um, and losing that first semi semi-final um, mm. to, to the Rabbitohs and, mm. you know, we use this with, for so much motivation, like that Paul Kent, um, he, he said it was like a famous quote, it was like, nah, they're done or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I remember that. And we're just like, you know what, like, we're not done, bro. Like, the underdog, eh? Yeah, just we took, we took that underdog mentality and, you know, it was so good having Yoi after that game, Yoi just brought us all together. Like, we should have been like proper, like, defeated. Like, I was obviously being a young in, in, in the team and for him to bring the team together and just be like, boys, like, this is the road we're gonna take. This like, was after the game, wasn't it? This was literally after the game yeah. on the field. Like you brought us it all together. Like, that. you know, nothing's given to us. We have to go out there and earn it. But like, I was just like, fuck. Like, if he's like this passionate about it, like, I'm ready to rip in, you know. And um, yeah, losing that and then Paul Kent, Paul Kent saying that we're done. Um, yeah, that lit so much fire under the belly. And yeah, we did what we did and um, won the grand final. So that was probably the standout for me, Yoey mm. having that chat to us after that game. And then Paul Kent, um, I remember all the boys just on their lives after the game. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're done, we're done. Paul Kent, we're done. <laughs> yeah, bro, everyone was taking taking the piss with that. So, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And um, probably the 2020, oh, the next grand final against Para. I remember the game to get into the grand final. We played, um, I think it was Rabbitohs. We played? Yeah, so we stayed in Parramatta. I don't know who thought to stay in Parramatta that night, but anyways. So that night, Parramatta played Cowboys, obviously won, and we're in the heart of Parramatta, bro. And, like, literally, they won, happy as, but it was like a proper, like, parade, bro. Everyone's just down there, like, 
pumping their horns and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, like, we're in Parramatta. And I, I didn't go sleep till, like, one thirty, bro, 2 o'clock in the morning because everyone was just going hard, like, celebrating and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just like, fuck, if this makes me play shit, I'm going to be, like, off it, bro. But, yeah, um, that that's probably something that I took out of that game, like, that ground. I was going to say, watch, I remember watching that game and um, – you guys were just a standout. Like you guys, it felt almost personal that game. Like mm. you really bashed Parramatta, like yeah. bashed them. And obviously we had that rivalry, you know, with Battle of the West, Parra v Penrith. And but yeah, I don't know, it just, it looked personal. It looked personal. Yeah, like you said, the Battle of the West um, is like a massive thing against Penrith and Parra. And um, you know, that year they beat us twice. And like everyone was saying, That's like, right. oh yeah, like Parramatta is like our kryptonite and all that kind of stuff. And um, I don't know who their who their videographer is, but he was like, like the way he was doing his captions on their on their Instagrams and stuff was just like ticking the boys off, and and I was just like, you know what, like we're gonna get these guys. And I remember fish like, I I remember this vividly. Like um, we're in a we're in like our meeting, and he just stood up out of nowhere, and then he was like obviously going into that grand final, and he just stood up and he's just like. I see dogs in this team. Everyone here's a fucking dog, and like I don't know how many dogs they have in that team, but everyone in this in this like in this meeting, like we're all fucking dogs. We got we just go out there and play like one, and we'll fucking we'll like get over them. And then, like yeah, that game just mm. we those boys started so well. Fish, you know Moses, mm. Yoey, and then Mitch Kenny started too, just mm. ripping into all the boys, and and yeah, like yeah, that grand final just. Went like a blur and then this ground final on my days, bro. Nathan Cleary's just, he's just Nathan Cleary, eh? Like, um, oh my God. to see what he did in that last 20 minutes is just, yeah, honestly, I was telling um, the bro before, like, I, I probably won't be able to, like, I probably won't sink in until I'm probably retired, honestly, like, because the year goes so fast. Like, I'm in the, I'm in the um, preseason now with the Roosters and, you know, that you don't really have too much time to reflect reflect upon these moments and and you know there's something like i'm you know i'm keen to do when i'm retired is to you know ref reflect upon our time that we we had at penrith and um and you know, just sit down and be proud of what what we did and, um and i actually yeah. had the same discussion with crit and knife like i asked the same question have you had time to reflect because man three pete four grand finals in a row mm -hmm. Like, I may be retired now. I may be able to look at that and appreciate that. Like, that is wild, man. That is crazy. That just doesn't happen in the modern game. Mm. What you boys have achieved is so bloody special, man. And I was at Penrith for nine seasons. And that last season in 2020 that I was able to play with you guys, that was by far one of the most special out of all of them. I know we didn't, we fell short in the end. But for me, I took so much out of that. Like, we had such a unique group. Everyone bonded. Everyone was on the same page. Everyone, I'm sure you felt that the next three years, but everyone was out there to be better. Mm. Like everyone was so invest, invested and obsessed with winning. It was almost like winning was an addiction. Even at, even on, even in training, did you feel that? Yeah, hundred percent. I I still feel like um, the hardest like so our G two sessions is like proper yeah. like we rip into each other like and this is a big shout out to we call them the Cougars like our reserve grade team yeah like they they turn up every single day and. They rip into us man. boys, you know, um, and we have to, you know, rip rip into them too because, you know, keep each other accountable and all that kind of stuff. There's even some, sometimes it gets pretty heated. Like there was, I remember I was doing it with you guys. It was like a bit of a push and shove. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. man, it was, and not only that, I'll be honest, like it took, I think it took me a while to kind of accept that because I'm like, fuck man, two days before a game and we're absolutely bashing the fuck out of each other. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, but you know what? After a few times we've done it, I'm like, fuck, this has meaning. This is, this, this makes sense. We're yeah. prepared to win. Yeah, yeah, and I, just a big shout out to Ivan. Every time he talks about um, being battle hard, being battle hard, and mm. and um, you know, yeah, that just resonates with me all the time when we're doing those sessions because all the boys are just ripping in, and you know, like we're making the Cougars better, like for their games too. You know, like competing hard against each other, and you know, it gives them confidence. Like if they can compete against, you know, like fish and that, mm. um, they should be able to go out there and do a job for. True. You know, in the cup and in that 2020 grand final, like our SU ball, our 20s, our cup and, and the Earl team, we all won the grand finals. So that was just special. That. that was just special in itself too. Like like we all were watching like the 20s grand final. Like they came back, I think, from like 18-0 down 
or something like that, or that might have been the SG War team. But anyways, and then we all went and watched the the Cup Grand Final, and yeah, and the, all the boys were there to watch us uh, in that 2022 Grand Final. So, so this next segment is called "What's in the Sauce." What's in the sauce? You like that? Mm. I, got, I was pretty excited. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't saw that come up with that. Oh, I've got a few questions here for you. Just a bit to know about yourself. You know, have a bit of fun. You know, nothing too crazy. Seriously. So don't get too nervous. <laughs> and, um, question one. Footy aside. Footy aside. Yes. Um, what sport do you enjoy watching away from, from league? What sport do I watch? Um, I love watching boxing or UFC. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I can see. Would you ever take up boxing? Yeah. Like, I, you know, obviously you've got Virginia Polo, Regan, Campbell Gillard, a few boxers. Jason Saab just stepped in the ring. Yeah. Is there something that interests you in the, in the long run? Yeah, it definitely entertains me a little bit. Um, so just speaking to Junior and um, in the Salmon camp, there's a lot of money there too. But yeah, just the, the thrill of just getting in there and just, you know, ripping in. Um, but I'm a big believer in you got to learn the fundamentals. And yeah. until I learn the fundamentals, you won't see me in the ring. So, um, is there anyone in the back of your mind that you might want to fight? <laughs> you don't have nah. to tell me. <laughs> no, nah, probably not. Um, but whenever that time comes, I'm, I'm keen. I'm keen for it. And oh, I'm sure you'd be ready for it. <laughs> uh, away from footy as well. Uh, what do you enjoy? Like any hobbies? Bro, I'm a proper gamer. Eh? Oh, I yeah? wouldn't say you're like I'm a. You're a gamer. gamer. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have pictured that. I can just sit there all day just playing the game, bro. What My games? Misses is off it, bro. What games? I love like. Um, I just recently started playing. Um, 2K, NBA 2K. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. But I'm proper like Call of Duty, bro. Not Fortnite? I I used to be back then, but yeah, I'm more Call of Duty now. I but got, yeah, I'm a proper gamer. I used yeah. to be a proper gamer as well. I used to love FIFA, yeah. um, Madden, um, but I just got no time anymore, man. I've got that many things going yeah, on at yeah. once. <laughs> uh, what is a secret talent you have that no one knows about? Secret talent? Since you've been an introvert, I'm sure you've got something in there <laughs> we can find. <laughs> I don't know about secret talent. I don't really have too much talent other than footy sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm that like, worked out there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like if I was in a footy player, honestly, I'd be lost, bro. Like, um, I don't know. Secret talent. I don't know if it's a talent, but I came first in English. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Bro, proper came first. Like no one would picture, but yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know if that's a talent. Or, I don't know. Play it's an accomplishment. It is definitely an accomplishment. Instrument or something. Like guitar. Like playing the guitar. Do you? You, yeah. play, you play music? Guitar only? Yeah, probably just only guitar, ukulele. Acoustic or? Yeah, yeah, acoustic. I don't even know what the difference is between the guitars, but I don't know how to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? That's one regret of mine. I would have loved to learn, uh, pick up an instrument and learned it uh, yeah. early, in my early days. How, how old were you when you first picked up a guitar? I don't even know. I was just, my older brother was playing and I just sort of just, he never taught me or anything. I just. Learned yourself? Yeah. Oh, that's mad. I just taught how you learn, I think. Yeah, that's a secret okay. talent. Yeah, I'll say play the guitar then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bit of what would you rather's, okay? Yep, sweet. All right. Would you rather live in a haunted house or in the middle of a desert? Haunted house in the middle of a desert. Far out. I can't do with the heat, eh? So I'll probably say haunted house. No way. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the desert if for God, sure. If God's with me, I'm not scared of anything, but I'll say I'll, I'll take the haunted house. <laughs> Brother, I could see you running out of that house. <laughs> with those crazy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take that. You know, I'll probably live in the desert, man. To be totally honest, I can't. I'm not. I don't like ghosts and shit like that. It creeped me out. Bro, I ended up in. I ended up in hospital after five hours of dehydration, bro. So I'm well, dead I'm within with your hours. Now. That makes total <laughs> sense. Uh, would you rather let your coach or your parents see your internet history? Internet history. Fuck. That's a deep <laughs> question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Would you let your coach or your parents see your internet history? I'll probably have to go coach because I don't know Robert too well now. So whatever he sees, like, oh, yeah. get to know me a little bit more. <laughs> What's in the internet history? He'll probably rip up my contract. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Knife on episode 11 uh, last week. And um, our next segment, we, we get our last guest to write you a question and for you to answer. So yeah. the envelope is there, brother. Sweet. Dig in. I reckon it'll be pretty. I reckon it'll be pretty deep as well, yeah. man. Yeah, I reckon it'll be pretty deep. <sighs> the the Ice Man, no the Ice Man himself. The ice Man himself. But I'm not gonna lie, I was stressing about this, eh? <laughs> Sir, I'm a big fan of this podcast, bro. So I know it's coming. <laughs> my man, <laughs> my man. Oy. If you could change one thing about 
the world we live in, what would it be? Fuck, That's a proper deep clear. question, bro. If you could change one thing about the world we live in, what would it be? It's very deep, man. There's a lot going one on at the moment the as well. Bro, I already have a question in one, two. So it's, no, I wouldn't even say. Anyways. Is there one that's tops it? I'll say just um, just in relation to what we do as athletes, I'll change, um, you know how people can hide behind their social media comments? Mm. I'd love to change that, eh? Mm. Just if, you, if you're going to say something bad about someone, like it has to be like your face sort of thing. Be held you know accountable I mean? for what you say. Be held ac- accountable for what you said. Like mm. I said, like people mentioning like kids and all this kind of stuff and you, you can't go up to this and confront that person because he's hidden behind like You're cowards, bro. Hidden behind a camera, or so that's not too much about the world, but just in relation to what we do and you know how much you know crap we get off people, and um, I would love to change that. Just just so the boys can confront those who, you know, um, trolls. have spoken. Yeah, like you said, trolls, and I'm sure the boys would love to con- confront those people. And yeah, I'd say that. Did I answer the question all right? Or? You're scaring me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. Um, yeah, like you said, just so people can be held accountable and, and yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's not only us that copper, but it's, you know, just the average person, you know. There's yeah, literally, not not even just us. Like, mm. yeah, there's so many trolls these days that just jump on social media and I just know that they can get away with it, you know you know what I mean? So Particularly with the world now where it's going, like mental health is such a massive and important part in our lives and – uh, I think it's something that's kind of neglected and I think social media is one of the biggest attributes towards that. It's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff you see on social media is, is negative and what you receive sometimes can be positive, negative, but I definitely feel like some most of it's negative and it's, right, for sure. it's a perception out there as well. Like you try to, in social media, you think everything is going good, but sometimes, you know, behind closed doors, man, you really don't know what, what that person is going through. So, yeah, 100%. man, that's a really important one. So yeah. now... You've got the opportunity to write a question for our next guest. Yeah, sweet. Oh, frick. So for someone that came first in English, I've got, <laughs> I got no doubt there, will, there won't be any grammar mistakes, that's for oh, sure. Yeah, I'm not going to cap it. Even if you go from my phone right now, I was like looking up deep questions and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Robbo would have loved that if we went into history. <laughs> I was like, oh, what did I say? Bro, my handwriting's horrendous. Don't say that. Everyone says that, actually. Everyone says that. Sort of deep, bro. Yeah. I remember someone asked me this question. I was just like, fire out. Oh, really? Yeah. Who did? Who asked you it? I was one of those, just one of the boys one time. I just stuck with me. So I'd be interested to see how this person answers it. Wrap it up. Sign, sign it, please. Sign, deliver. Cracker. Hey. How long did it take you to master your signature? Bro, I'm still changing it now, eh? Yeah, I'm the same at your age. I keep Bro, still chopping and changing. Yeah. Still change it up and that. What will you miss most about Penrith? What would I miss most about Penrith? There'd be so much, eh? Mm. Um, I'll just miss, like, our bond. Like, yeah. the brothers that we created. Um, yeah, I'll just miss that. The boys, you know, we, we, like, I've been there for five years and, um, yeah, we've created so much memories do so much with um, for each other and all that kind of stuff, and uh, you know, obviously, I'm moving out now, and yeah, I'll just I'll just say the boys, bro. Like, like I said, we just created so, so much, created something so special, and mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I think those those boys will be my brothers for life, and, and no matter where we are, you know, whatever paths we take, um, you know, we'll have those memories to look upon and you know, talk about when we're older. So. Yeah. When you first come in, um, and out of all those boys, who was the most inspirational for you and who really took you under their wing? Inspirational? I would say uh, Moses Leota. Um, I sort of knew him going in, um, going into first grade and, mm. um, you know, I mould my game sort of like, sort of like his. Um, we're both run rowers. You know, he, he came off the bench when, when, when I first came into to first grade and he's starting now and... Um, yeah, I look up to that guy heavy. He knows that too. And yeah, yeah I'd say, I'll say Moses Leota. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty special, man. And yeah. what, um, what I want to know about you and your game is how do you approach a game? You know, what do you do? Is there anything that kind of makes you tick and gets you amped up? Cause you know, I did speak about it before. Like it is your impact. It is your aggression. What, how do you take yourself there? 
yeah, I honestly don't even know. Eh? It's just something just clicks when when you're on the field. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just go back to my parents. Um, yeah. Like they've sacrificed so much for me and every time I see them, they don't miss a game. And when I see them, it's just like, you know, it's just hard to repay Passion, them, huh? you know. And mm. um, every time I go on the field, I, I always think about them and I always think about their sacrifice and, you know, that that – that really makes me tick, you know. I um, love that. I'm not gonna let that that stuff go unwarranted, and and yeah. What I'll can we What can we expect from you from you and the Roosters in 2024? Hopefully a premiership, bro. Um, if you you know you do all these preseasons, you you know you almost you know end up in hospital, you almost die. <laughs> you know, to try to get a chip, and um, you know that's what that's what I want want to do at, at Roosters, mm. and I'm sure that's everyone's aspirations. You know, as an NRL player to to win a chip and um and yeah i'd say um yeah winning the grand final with the sydney roosters would be would be pretty special in my first year so well yeah. brother you're as passionate as they come and i've got no doubt you're gonna have a big 2024 with the roosters all the best with the tricolors uh, all the best with a new club and um man i can't wait to see you out there killing it brother no, thanks I appreciate for, you brother thanks, thanks for, for coming on the show Been guys and that's a wrap guys thanks so much for coming on the journey with us in 2023 i just want to wish you a merry christmas a happy new year stay safe enjoy your family time and god bless see you in 2024